Howdy and hello folks, my name is Christian Sasser, but you can call me MH4, and it's no secret that I really like Fortnite. I've played Fortnite for 675 hours as of the time of this recording, and the footage I'm using in the background is footage that I recorded on my Twitch stream where I play Fortnite. Twitch.tv slash Masterhand4444. But I'm not here today to talk about the game itself. I'm here to talk about the comics. Now, Fortnite comics didn't exactly start with Batman Fortnite Zero Point. For those of you who aren't aware, Fortnite does crossovers with comic book characters all the time. More specifically, there are frequent collaborations with both Marvel and DC Comics. This is even to the point where in Chapter 2 Season 4 of Fortnite, they did a whole season-wide collaboration between Fortnite and Marvel Comics, where every character in the Battle Pass that you could unlock was a Marvel Comics character, and the whole map had Marvel Comics-themed items and locations strewn around it. So it's safe to say that Fortnite and comics are pretty intrinsically linked at this point. And I'm here to talk to you today about why that's important. This is both important for Fortnite as a game and comics as an industry. And I know that's a big claim to make for Mr. Macho YouTube guy over here, but I think the widespread success of these comics are helping the comics industry in a way that hasn't been seen in a long time. This is even supported in interviews with the people behind Batman Fortnite Zero Point. However, before we get to the wider impact of the comics, let's do a brief recap of Fortnite's history with comic books. So while there were certain events linked to comic characters, before the actual comics themselves started coming out, such as the Gotham City POI and the Thanos-themed game mode. The first Fortnite comic was a digital-only comic called Fortnite Marvel Nexus War 4. This is sort of a prequel to Chapter 2 Season 4 Nexus War, where Thor, who is in this canon, the Herald of Galactus, is shown attempting to stop Galactus from eating the Zero Point, which, if you don't know what a Zero Point is, We'll get to that later. This is one very basic issue, but it sets the groundwork and the tone for future Fortnite comics in a way that is much more impactful than I originally gave it credit for. I'm gonna be honest, I completely forgot the Nexus War comic existed until I was doing research on a certain thing we'll get to later. But the idea of Nexus War cements that crossovers are canon to Fortnite story and, when willing, to the stories of the characters they're crossing over with. There's even evidence in a separate Wolverine issue that the story of Nexus War is canon to Marvel Comics. So long story short, Nexus War sets an important precedent. And this precedent is continued with arguably the star of the show here, Batman Fortnite Zero Point. Now I've been wanting to talk about Batman Fortnite Zero Point for a long time now, but I haven't known what shape the video would take. However, today, February 25th, 2022, it was announced that in June of 2022, Fortnite and Marvel are doing a very similar limited run series called Fortnite Marvel Zero War. And the announcement of Zero War is what pushed me to finally talk about the Fortnite comics and why they're important. Because it's very obvious to me now that they will continue to be important and they will continue to be made. Just to give you a very brief recap of everything that happens in these comics. Major spoilers for Batman Fortnite Zero Point and Foundation, by the way. Issue one, Batman and Catwoman and I think Harley Quinn and a mysterious other character get sucked into the Fortnite world through a rift that opens in Gotham City. Issue two, we find Batman who has lost his memories while in the Fortnite loop using his innate detective skills to fight his way out. I believe this is the issue where he meets Catwoman. Although they don't remember each other, and they cannot speak to each other because of the effects of the Fortnite loop. They remember each other from their worlds, sort of. It's like they have this emotional connection and they use this to form a camaraderie and they defeat everyone else in the battle royale and Batman sacrifices himself in the storm so Catwoman can be the last man standing and escape the loop. Issue three, Batman meets Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe and they fight. There's also a cameo in here from the Psycho Bandit from Borderlands, which I thought was neat. Anyways, Batman fights G.I. Joe. Remember, they can't remember each other throughout the loops but emotions can be retained each loop. So as Batman and Snake Eyes come draw against draw against draw, and that one can't beat the other, they form an emotional respect for one another and they remember that respect. And eventually they stop fighting and communicate in sign language, which causes the people overseeing the loop to be like, uh? And so Snake Eyes sacrifices himself in the storm so Batman can be the last man standing. He escapes the loop, and but he's still on the Fortnite island and he sees Catwoman being held hostage by a Deathstroke redesign that I don't really like that much. Issue four, Deathstroke, who Batman and Catwoman don't remember, keep that in mind, don't remember who he is. Deathstroke takes them to a group of surviving loopers, as they're called. And these are all like Fortnite original characters. Batman uses his detective skills as well as the skills of the loopers to find a secret underground bunker. Ooh, surprise, surprise, Fishstick dies. And I know you're probably thinking, but 
Christian, people die in Fortnite all the time. This is different. They are outside of the loop. They're still on the Fortnite island, but out here, they're just dead. They can't loop anymore. They're gone. So Fishstick dies because, surprise, surprise, Deathstroke betrayed them. This is the part where issues five and six kind of blend together for me. At some point, Deathstroke reveals that he's working with a mysterious organization. That mysterious organization is the same one that runs the loop. And so Deathstroke uses a device that allowed him to travel between the dimensions while keeping his memories and stuff to escape while Batman and Catwoman and the other loopers are stuck on the island. And so eventually they find a way to return all the loopers to their home dimensions so certain characters in Fortnite actually get to go home by using Harley Quinn, who remember was also there. And uh, turns out she was also working with the organization because she just wanted to have fun on the loop and go through an endless cycle of fighting and winning and fighting and winning. And she does the floss. <laughs> so they use Harley Quinn to trace them back to their home dimension and get home. And then Batman and Catwoman get all their memories back. It cuts on a cliffhanger where we see Lex Luthor and the Batman who laughs talking with Fortnite character Dr. Sloan. It's revealed that Batman escaping the loop is what they wanted so they could research him and stuff and they open a rift over Metropolis so they can, I, I, I forget exactly what it is, but this is a, I'll link, <laughs> you need to read the comics. <laughs> As you can tell from my long-winded unscripted ramble of an explanation of the story, I like it. I like it a lot. I do think there are some low points. I think once issue four hits, kind of drags till you get to issue six, but overall, I really like this series. I think it's very well written and it doesn't feel, despite obviously, you know, it is a cash grab, it doesn't feel like a cash grab. It reveals parts of Fortnite canon that you don't really consider until you read the comic. Like, Gilded Guy right here, he's a crossover character. Big recommendation, by the way, watch Gilded Guy. He is stuck in the loop. He's still there. How's he gonna get home? All the crossover characters, all the cool, Oh, you got Master Chief to add to Fortnite. It's the guy from Fortnite. All the guys from Fortnite are stuck there. Ariana Grande, Kratos, Ryu from I'm Streets, 50,000 Marvel <sighs> characters. Unless they can find a way to escape the loop, they're trapped. They're trapped on either the loop or the island, and there's a chance they may never get back. Additionally, and I'm not going to go into Fortnite lore, dump, whatever, but the loop creates clones of you, so you never truly leave the loop. Those snapshots are always there, fighting forever. So a person never truly leaves the loop. That's even shown in Batman Fortnite Zero Point. You can see here, no censored way. We got ba armored Batman Zero and this version of Catwoman Zero that is wearing Lynx's armor, which I think is sick. Wish that was a skin. They're in the loop now too. It's wild to me. On one hand, it's a very cool, tragic story. And on the other hand, it's Fortnite. I adore how through this mini series, they have exposed how the juxtaposition between the silliness of Fortnite and the seriousness of the story can collide in such a meaningful way. Part of why these comics are so impactful are because there are actual artists who are doing their best to take something as corporate and calculated as Fortnite and turn it into something special. And I greatly appreciate that from the team at Epic Games working on Fortnite. Anyways, <laughs> the ending of this leads us directly into this. Batman Fortnite Foundation, as you can see, we got the Batman Who Laughs and Dwayne the Foundation Johnson. <laughs> so long story short, Batman escape loop and he finds an energy reading similar to the loop in Gotham Harbor and he finds Foundation there who, long story thing, I don't feel like explaining it. Go watch an explanation. <laughs> this comic shows Foundation and Batman teaming up with the rest of the Justice League, trying to stop a plethora of DC villains from entering the roop over Metropolis that was created at the ending of Zero Point. And eventually, Juan does get through Batman Who Laughs, and because of the special metal that makes up his visor, he's immune to the loop's effects. So now Batman Who Laughs has access to, like, the multiverse. Maybe even the omniverse, if he can figure it out. That's wild. That... Fortnite, of all things, is giving the Batman Who Laughs access to all of fiction. For those of you who don't know what the Zero Point is, the Zero Point is the nexus of all reality. It's like an orb thing, and I'll put a picture of it on screen right now. When you are able to harness it, you can travel between realities. You can travel between dimensions, uh, between 
universes, multiverses, the omniverse. For reference, the omniverse is like a multiverse of multiverses. So say you have the Marvel multiverse, like how they're forming with the cinematic universe, like Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness that has people from all across Marvel's multiverse. DC's multiverse exists outside of Marvel's multiverse. They very rarely, if at all, interconnect. The idea of the omniverse is that both of those multiverses are separate from each other and can be traveled between in the same way that you can travel between dimensions. It's a little confusing, but it's a cool idea that helps separate canons from each other. And so the zero point is a connector for omniverses. And now Batman Who Laughs has access to all of media. <laughs> and just for the uninitiated, that's also how Fortnite justifies having so many crossovers. It's because they come through thanks to the zero point. And that's why also this is called zero point and why the Nexus War thing was called Nexus War because the zero point is the nexus of all reality. And that's why the upcoming Fortnite Marvel Zero War is called Zero War. As I said earlier, Zero War just got announced earlier today as of the time of this recording. So all we know is that it is coming and it will include more Fortnite lore dumping, more Agent Jones, and will include Shuri, Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Iron Man. Wolverine and Iron Man have already been in Fortnite thanks to the Nexus War. Spider-Man is currently in Chapter 3 Season 1, and Shuri will be a new addition to the Fortnite roster. I'm very happy that Fortnite is continuing to take comics as a medium seriously in telling their story. While I do understand the criticism that if they want to tell their story, they should just tell it in the game, right? I completely understand wanting to keep it here, you know? But I think by branching off into other mediums, and allowing for that to happen. Not only will it allow them to weave a richer narrative than they can with just a story event in the Battle Royale every three months, I think it's going to help the other industries that they use. So with all that said, where does Fortnite go in the future? Hopefully more comics, hopefully with a wider variety of characters, and I would love to see Fortnite bleed into more of pop culture in a meaningful way that is canon to both Fortnite and the pop culture. Imagine seeing Agent Jones pop up in the Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi series, even if he's just in the background. It would be so dumb, but so impactful that it is legitimizing the fact that Fortnite is connecting all of these worlds together in a meaningful way. That's primarily what I want. I want, in the future, crossovers to continue being meaningful. So what's the takeaway from this video? I guess I play Fortnite too much. Fortnite. Ah! What? Fortnite. What? Why did you have to say Fortnite? Fortnite. Oh my god, get the guy on screen. Get the guy on screen.